Two knowledge that has illuminated the entire universe. Henry David once said, if one advances confidently in the direction of one's dream and endeavors to live the life which one has imagined, one will meet with success unexpected in common hours. Holding firm to this notion, I, Husband Kaur, and I, Madhur Sri Ram, welcome this huge assemblage of multitudes of avant-garde scholars and missionaries to the commencement of the 6th Annual International Commerce Conference 2018 on digital... Its inception in 1967 has had its roots deeply entrenched in the DAC tradition of exploring new frontiers of knowledge and innovation in academics. It is a blend of modern thinking with traditional practices. The vision envisaged by the Department of creating a gateway of commerce education in the country has played a pivotal role in nurturing and contributing to the national think tanks who have continuously been involved in India's development. In this history, spanning over five decades, mint and delivery at most competitive prices. It empowers the customers and all... Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Yogesh K. Pyagi, accompanied by Professor Kavita Sharma, Head and Dean, Department of Commerce, Faculty of Commerce and Business, University of Delhi, uh -huh. to kindly felicitate Shri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, Honorable Minister of Electronics and Information Mark Technology Queen. and Minister of Law and Justice with a bouquet. Mm -hmm. Now, we, re we request Professor Next, we request Professor Kavita Sharma to kindly present the bouquet to Ms. Vinita Bali, former CMT, Britannia Industries. Now, we request Professor Madan Lal, conference convener, to kindly felicitate Professor Pami Dua, Chairperson, Research Council and Director, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. We now request Professor S.K. Jain to kindly come on to the stage and present the bouquet to Professor Jagdish Sheth, Emory University, Atlanta, USA and Founder, Chairman, Academy of Indian Marketing. We request Dr. H.K. Dangi to come onto the stage and felicitate Professor Kavita Sharma. <laughs> we now request Dr. Sunaina Kanojia to kindly come onto the stage and felicitate Professor Madan Lal. A teacher inspires hope, ignites the imagination, and instills a love for learning. And the one with years of experience to her credit is an asset, not only to the institution, but to the society as well. Professor Kavita Sharma is Head and Dean, Department of Commerce, Faculty of Commerce and Business, University of Delhi. She is the member of Academy of Marketing Science, USA. She is the member of Research Development Center of Trivaji University and Hemvati Nandan Bhoguna University. She is the governing body member of Mata Sundri College, University of Delhi. She is also the member of Board of Studies of various management institutes. She was associated with ICAI for development of e-content. She was selected for participation in faculty consortium organized by Academy of Marketing Science held in Australia. She is in the reviewer board of various national and international journals and the founding editor of Journal of Commerce and Business Studies. She has authored three books and more than two dozen research papers published in national and international journals. 
She has traveled different parts of the world to give her paper presentations in the area of her interest and also chaired technical sessions. Five of her research papers have been adjudged with Best Paper Award in international conferences held in India and abroad. Eight PhD and five MPhil degrees have been awarded under her supervision. We request you to kindly address the gathering, ma'am. Can we have a round of applause, please? In all, our chief guest, Honorable Shri Ravi Shankar Prasad ji, Minister of Electronics and Information Technology, and Minister of Law and Justice, guest of honor, Honorable Professor Yogesh K. Tyagi. Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi, and Ms. Vinita Bali, former CMD, Britannia Industries Limited, distinguished guests, Professor Pamidwa, Chairperson, Research Council, and Director, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi, Professor Jagdish Sheet, Founder, Chairperson, Academy of Indian Marketing, and our co-chair for this conference, eminent guests, research scholars, delegates from academic and corporate world, and my dear students. It is indeed my proud privilege and delight to welcome you all to this mega event. This is something out of my belief today, that something has come true. This is the sixth edition of this conference, and today I am reminding myself of the way we all have put together our efforts to take this <coughs> conference to a higher levels of academic discourse. In each edition of this conference, a new dimension was added, and this year, much to our delight, we have collaborative partner, Academy of Indian Marketing. From one day national conference, we have now truly scaled it up to an international level. But there are still many additions that we can make to this platform. The idea was not just to scale up, but to bring the best of the best experiences and learning for our students. In fact, in future, I look forward to many such new beginnings, many such new collaborations, because this is a new beginning we have done today. And future, I, I see that there will be many such opportunities will be coming to our way, and future leaders will be taking up those opportunities. This conference theme, digital outreach and future of marketing practices, resonates with the way our life today from governance to household management. But there are learnings which we need to have to utilize the digital space to the best of our advantage. In every domain of the digital space, it provides convenience of expression, transparency, openness to ideas, ease, and the speed. But there are required learnings too. With digitalization, undoubtedly, there are many fold opportunities to explore in every domain of our life, but we need to understand that our 10 digit number, our DPs, our hashtag, or at the rate, are not the way we are as a person. This I am saying more for my young audience in particular. We need to understand not just its potential and challenges, but to my understanding, how it is impacting our life. We are turning ourselves into roommate families, as observed by Professor Jigdish Shet in one of his writings. It is a significant change indeed in the society, but of a worry also. With the galaxy of speakers around, I am looking forward to understand the implication of this transitional change in the society. We are honored to have learned dignitaries on dais with us today in various sessions who will enlighten us in the most scientific way, enabling us to be in line with this transformation. All is to say that this conference is quintessential in the digital marketing world of commerce. How, as a consumer, we partake into this digital transformation? It all depends upon the education and knowledge embedded into, this, into the mindset of the consumer on one hand. On the other hand, it is the marketers who need to deal competitively and honestly with the consumers as it will be a new kind of a competitive world. We are pleased to have Minister Sir with us today, under whose able leadership the Ministry of Information and Technology has scaled up new heights 
And we are witnessing digital transformation in the country. It is not just now the bringing digitalization in the various fields of our activities, but to have the digital inclusion in the country. Inclusive growth is a way to ensure sustainable growth, and the digital inclusion is a means to that. Digital inclusion is adding up to the aspirations of one and all, setting up new word order, which is more transparent and equalized word in terms of access to information. Needless to, needless to say that, University of Delhi is fast adopting this digital transformation. Under your able leadership, Vice Chancellor Sir, our admission and other administrative processes are fully transparent now. We have learned how to make e-procurement and e-tendering, which has brought in the new level of ease and transparency in the system. Sir, so, you'll be happy to know that this conference has been handled entirely online using various e-platforms. Department of Commerce is exuberantly and perpetually benefit, benefited once it has switched over to the digital mode, be it in academics, administration, and holding of this conference. And I must add to that, over the period of last two years, in terms of the facilities and the skill sets, but with the urge to improvise, we are constantly working on our strengths. Our strength is not just our number, sir. Being one of the largest department of University of Delhi, in terms of its students and its faculty, but the diverse knowledge and skills that we provide. Therefore, we need to further strengthen our courses at various levels to bring the required learnings to our students. We started working for this conference nearly one year ago. Our past conference held in November 2016, three verticals, and with the help of the track chairs and large pool of reviewers, we shortlisted nearly 120 papers, 120 papers. I'm happy that Professor Denis Shah from Georgia University, Dr. Amender Singh from Iron Calcutta, and Dr. Varsha Jain from MICA has extended an immense support in completing the review process in the time-bound manner. In this conference, we have, we have built up a new association, and I hope that this will help, help us in gaining more strength in future. Once again, I extend the warm welcome to all the esteemed guests and participants who will be joining us in this mega event and hope that they will carry home the memories to last longer. There is a dedicated team which has worked day and night, right from the day of the conceptualization of this conference till its final preparation and execution. I'm thankful to all the speakers of the plenary sessions and special sessions for joining us today who have joined us from a different parts of the world and, of course, the different parts of the country also. And also the session chairs and co-chairs to extend their support in managing the session. I hope that we'll be able to pr prove ourselves as a good host. I welcome once again. Thanks. Pami <laughs> Dua completed her PhD in economics in 1985 from London School of Economics, University of London, UK. She pursued her MSc in economics from the same university in 1981 with the distinction after her graduation in BA honours with first division in 1978 from Lady Sri Ram College, University of Delhi. She was also rewarded with Government of India Merit Scholarship and with London School of Economics Merit Scholarship. Currently, Professor Dua is serving as Chairperson, Research Council, University of Delhi. Along with that, she is handling the position of Director for Delhi School of Economics. She became the head for the Department of Economics in 2010 and served the department as head till 2014. Her previous experience counts as the lecturer for Wayne State University, Michigan, USA, assistant professor and associate professor in the field of economics for the University of Connecticut, Stanford, USA. Professor Dua, through her prominent research publications, helped in extending her knowledge to others. She presented distinct research papers which got published in renowned journals. She also came up with various books and monographs which received much appreciation. She has also been the panelist for various national and international conferences. She has successfully delivered various special lectures on topics such as applications of time series and forecasting and rational expectations in macroeconomics in distinct, reputed colleges and institutions. 
She was appointed as the member secretary for internal quality assurance cell, University of Delhi, as the chairperson, Agricultural Economics Research Center, University of Delhi, as the president for the Indian Econometric Society, and many more. Her specialization encompasses econometrics, time series analysis, forecasting, and macroeconomics. Her dedication and passion towards the field can be seen by her constant support, guidance, supervision, which helped the students in completing their higher degrees successfully. We request our distinguished guest, Professor Pamidua, to kindly address the gallery. A very good morning to everyone present here. Honorable Sri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, Honorable Professor Yogesh Tyagi, Professor Jagdish Seth, Ms. Vinita Bali, Professor Kavita Sharma, Professor Madan Lal, esteemed colleagues, dear students and friends. On behalf of the Delhi School of Economics, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the conference organized by the Department of Commerce on an extremely topical theme of digital outreach and future of market practices. I believe that the conference is truly blessed to have such an august gathering of distinguished speakers and participants, and I heartily congratulate the head of the Department of Commerce and all others who have worked very hard to organize this. It is also auspicious that the conference is being held in this hall dedicated to Swami Vivekanand, who believed in man-making and integrated development of man and all his faculties through education. Swami Vivekanand also stressed on serving the poor and downtrodden, and his humble prayer is inscribed here in the Swami Vivekanand Hall. May I be born again and again and suffer thousands of miseries so that I may worship the only God that exists, the only God I believe in, the sum total of all souls, and above all, my God the wicked, my God the miserable, my God the poor of all races, is the special object of my worship. This prayer reminds us that God is one, but wise men describe him in different ways. It also reminds us to remain grounded even in a dynamic digital world. The theme of the conference is very appropriate in today's age of digital innovation and technology, which has led to the creation of a knowledge-driven innovation economy and communication, protection of environment, community and societal development bodes well for sustainable growth and job creation. You may be aware that the University of Delhi, besides focusing on excellence in teaching and learning, is also research-oriented and seeks to create and transmit high-quality research and innovation for the benefit of the society, nation, and the world. Its strong commitment to excellence in research is evident from the substantive funding it receives from extramural sources. It has an H index of 157, which is the highest among all Indian universities. Faculty members publish their research in journals with high impact factors. Outstanding research work has been rewarded with international and national recognition and awards. Faculty members have also been awarded prestigious research fellowships the world over. 
The university also partners with institutions across the globe with active collaborations in research. As a research intensive university, the University of Delhi envisions further strengthening the research culture towards achieving international distinction in research and innovation. The university thus looks forward to the contribution of this conference towards the fulfillment of this goal. The conference program provides a vibrant forum for a healthy and productive exchange of ideas that is expected to promote research and address societal, national and global challenges. I once again congratulate the organizers of this conference and look forward to many stimulating sessions. Thank you very much. Learn more, do more and become more. You are a leader. Ms. Vinita Bali is a global business leader with extensive experience in successfully leading large companies both in India and overseas. She has worked with eminent multinationals like the Coca-Cola Company and Cadbury Schweppes PLC in a variety of marketing and general management roles in the UK, Nigeria, South Africa, Latin America and the USA, in addition to Britannia Industries Limited in India. In 1994, Ms. Vinita joined the Coca-Cola Company as its worldwide marketing director and played an instrumental role in doubling the brand's historical growth rate during the time period for the next three years. In 1997, she took over as the Vice President of Marketing for Latin America and in 1999 relocated to the Chile as the President of the Andean Division. In 2001, she was made a corporate officer of the Coca-Cola Company and appointed vice president and head of global business strategy. She also represented the Coca-Cola Company on the boards of the American Foundation for the Blind, New York, as well as the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. In 2005, following 16 years of overseas assignments, Ms. Vinita returned to India as MD and CEO of Britannia, and during the next nine years, significantly diversified the geographic and product portfolio and also steered the company on a health and nutrition course. In 2009, Ms. Vinita created the Britannia Nutrition Foundation and since then has pioneered the cause of addressing malnutrition in India. We now request Ms. Vinita Bali to kindly address the gathering. I think it's an interesting topic that you have chosen and I have very little to say except that digital is already here and the future of marketing practices we don't really know. Uh, the reason why I say that is the speed of change that digitization creates and therefore the responsibility on marketeers and other people who are involved in any sector that involves communication, whether it is the development sector, whether it is academics, how people learn. People are now learning through MOOCs and stuff like that, not in classrooms, which were traditional ways of learning, but you can learn in the environment of your own home or whichever way you choose to. I think the implication for marketeers and business people is that Speed is going to be of the essence, flexibility, adaptability, embracing new technologies, not being set in your ways. I remember when I started working in India as a brand manager, life was very simple. You did two big promotions in a year. You put your ads on Chitrahar or Chayageet every Wednesday and on uh, Sunday just before the feature film and you were all set. Uh, the world has come a long way from that. So I want to illustrate this to you, not by talking about the big things that we read about in you know, the business papers. We talk about e-commerce companies and who's become a unicorn and so on. In my view, the real, real advantage and benefit of digitization and access to technology, affordability of technology, um, 
is really happening at an individual level. So I want to tell you three stories. These are not stories. These are real things which I have personally experienced. And I want you to think about the innovativeness of the individuals behind this. These are not people who are creating big e-commerce businesses. But in a country like India, where over 80% of our population is self-employed in some way or another, you know, the fruit seller, the vegetable seller, and so on, um, the daily worker, uh, how those people have taken to technology and made not just their lives, but also our lives very happy and simple. And this is happening as we speak. So the first story I want to tell you is an interesting experience. I wanted to buy some pots for my garden. I live in Bangalore and you know, some of us are fortunate enough to have enough space to have some pots. And somebody told me about this individual. He said, Aap Imran bhai ko phone kijiye and uh, he'll send you pictures and you can decide which pot you want. So I called him up. He said, uh, Madam, don't worry. I will WhatsApp kar dunga. So he actually sent me photographs, beautiful photographs of clay pots. And uh, he sent me the size, he sent me the dimension. I ordered my pots on WhatsApp and he delivered them. Uh, so this is not about, you know, big Amazon looking at uh, big data, artificial intelligence and so on. This is the intelligence of individual entrepreneurs who know, you know, those of us who've been through business schools and I uh, apologize to everybody who's associated with a business school. We trend to create big jargons, you know, CRM, customer relationship management. Who taught Imran Bhai customer relationship management? <laughs> you know, he, he did it. He did it instinctively. And then he came. He came with his young daughter. So, um, you know, I was very curious. I spoke to him. He said, nay, you know, she taught me how to do this. Now even I can WhatsApp and he showed me a list of so many customers that, uh, and I asked him, I said, what's happened to your business? He said, my business has actually improved. And it's very nice because ghar mein bethe bethe I get the orders and I do this thing and I deliver. So that's my first story. The second story, similarly, in a similar way, you know, we talk about celebrating entrepreneurship and innovativeness. I do believe real innovative and therefore are far more imaginative in terms of what they can do with the little that they have. And they are the ones who have taken to technology and embraced technology in very, very significant ways. So uh, there are people, I'm sure they exist in uh, Delhi as well. Uh, you know, those of us who want to once in a while, uh, you know, go and get a pedicure or a manicure done or a massage. Um, you know, there's a lady, she's given you her phone number. Uh, you call her up, she shows up at your doorstep with a little bag and uh, she comes home and she does, you know, whatever manicure, pedicure that you want to get done. And who has helped her figure this out? She's figured this out on her own. Uh, in this case, this is a person who used to work, uh, you know, in a five-star hotel. And she said, I was bound by what time to go and what time to come back. I wanted to do this on my own. And she has set herself up in business. I met her uh, three years after she did this. And she told me very proudly that she now employs 20 other women to do the same thing. They do this at their own time. You know, for them, it's about finishing the housework. It's between 11 and 3. It's a great form of supplementing their income and so on. The last story is from a village in uh, Gauhati. I'm associated with a company, Crystal, um, and the, the, you know, part of the CSR work that Crystal is doing is um, to really teach women uh, how to take care of their expenditure uh, so that they have a sense of what is the income coming into the family and where the expenses are happening. It's also interesting that weaving in Assam is done by the women and not by men, and they love to weave. So at one of these interactions, we were talking to them and saying, if you had one wish, what would that wish be? And they said, we love to weave. We would like to figure out how we can weave 
and sell what we do and make better money. So to cut a long story short, um, we got involved. We connected them with some, um, uh, you know, organizations that actually buy and uh, sell. These women create whatever they create. They again take a photograph. They put it on WhatsApp. They send it out, and um, you know there is um, an e-commerce platform that actually buys from them and sells it. The advantage of this is that a lot of the middlemen have been removed and these women weavers are actually supplementing their family income, doing what they like to do and earning more in the process. So why am I telling you these three stories? They're not randomly picked. I think each of these stories has an important lesson for each of us. And that is that the power of technology is such that it actually creates opportunities uh, to supplement family income, to create new businesses. These don't necessarily have to be listed companies or anything like that. It generates more opportunity for individuals to create greater opportunities for themselves. I think the call for organized marketeers really is that you don't know where your competition is going to come from. So if I was in any of these businesses, I would really think hard about what is the digital outreach we as large organizations are doing. And it is not about sending you a message or having an e-commerce site or doing a competition and so on. I think large companies really have to think through and say, what is the enhanced advantage we can create for our customers? And this is not just in terms of products, but also in terms of services. Uh, there is an increased responsibility that comes with this increased opportunity. And I think just because we now have access to big data, artificial intelligence that a lot of us are talking about, you know, if you read some of the people in the technical world, uh, you know, two billion jobs have been predicted to be lost between now and somewhere because artificial intelligence will come to, uh, you know, solutions and conclusions that otherwise we were employing people to do. I don't even think that is the point. I think the bigger point is how do we use our intelligence uh, and what do we do with the data that we have created? because the role of marketing is not going to change. If I were to simply define the role of marketing as the ability to identify an opportunity out there in the market, as the ability to commercialize that opportunity through a business model that is going to be self-sustaining, then that role of marketing is not going to change. What is going to change is how those benefits and products and services are delivered to customers. And therefore, it behoves all of us, all you students who are sitting here and you've got ideas of getting into your own ventures. I think there is a responsibility on what we do with data. Just because we have data does not mean that we either have information or knowledge or wisdom. What we do with that data is going to determine to a large extent our own productivity the productivity of organizations we either work for or we lead, and how we are going to be responsible for creating better communities, better societies, and a better planet through whatever means we choose to do, whether as entrepreneurs or as professionals working in organizations. I think the healthcare sector is another sector that is benefiting immensely from the use of uh, technology. 3D is going to make things a lot easier for everybody. So technology is there. It is in the middle of us. We cannot escape it. What impact it's going to have is dependent a lot on how we access, embrace, and use technology. And I do believe that the future is going to be very exciting, primarily because it is less predictable than it was and it's going to change at a pace faster than any of us can imagine. So with these few words, I wish you a very good conference. Thank you. South Asian University and Professor at Jawaharlal Nehru University.
His areas of interest remained international law, international organizations, human rights, legal theory, and globalization. Professor Tyagi holds a PhD in legal studies from JNU and LLM in legal studies from Columbia University. He has enormous publications <coughs> to his credit at national as well as international levels. His, his most talked about recent publications include Permanent Sovereignty Over Natural Resources, the UN Human Rights Committee, Practice and Procedures, The Challenge of Globalization, the Indiana Perspective, The Denunciation of Human Rights Treaties, and Legal Aspects of Minority Languages. On taking charge as Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi, Professor Tyagi underlined society's needs to have high caliber scholars who can offer solutions to address different issues and thus stressed upon excellence in teaching and research at University of Delhi. He is confident that DU faculties will attempt to kindle a sense of responsibility, honesty, conscience, justice, and above all, commitment to human values in the students. We request Professor Yogesh Tyagi to kindly grace the occasion with some words of inspiration. Shalji, Honorable Dean, Head, Professor Kavita Sharmaji, distinguished guests, delegates, friends, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the University of Delhi, I have great pleasure in welcoming the Honorable Law Minister and Information Technology Minister of India, Shri Ravishankar Prashadji. Something The best thing, the digital outreach, what his vision is all about, except one statement. <coughs> we did not witness industrial revolution, so we do not know how it happened. But we have witnessed two revolutions. One being one of the greatest powers on the earth as information technology power and one more revolution, that is digital revolution. In the last one or two years, we have witnessed something extraordinary. One thing to share with you. Today, any student from any part of the world can apply for admission in Delhi University. He or she need not to come here. Anybody can pay fee from any part of the world to get admission in Delhi University. This is what I consider a revolution. A great amount of change is due to come. We do not know how things will change, whether human being will remain actually human being with digital revolution. I have no idea. But at least one thing is clear, that we are in the process of empowerment in most democratic manner. This is democratic revolution too. There's one more revolution that is taking place. Though that revolution may not be directly relevant to the subject of today's discussion, and that is legal revolution. I won't go into the detail because I want this conference to remain a conference on commerce. <laughs> but something special is taking place in the form of women empowerment, which was never thought of in Indian history. And both digital revolution and that re legal revolution, is hap both are happening when Sri Ravi Shankar Prashadji is holding the position of Law Minister of India and Information Technology Minister of India. Please give him a big hand. Thank you, Dean Sharma, to invite me to this inaugural session so that I could be benefited by the erudite lecture of Vinitaji. And I look forward to others' lecture and especially to the lecture and articulation of the ideas on digital revolution by Honorable Mr. Saab. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Vision without action. This person who successfully converted his vision into action is Professor Jagdish Shade. Professor Jagdish Shade is the Charles H. Kelstar Professor of Marketing at Goigweta Business School, Emory University, and Founder Chairman, Academy of Indian Marketing. He is known nationally and internationally for his scholarly contributions in consumer behavior, relationship marketing, competitive strategy, and geopolitical analysis. Professor Shait has over 50 years of combined experience in teaching and research at University of Southern California, the University of Illinois, Columbia University, MIT, 
and Emory University. Throughout his career, Professor Shait has offered hundreds of presentations in at least 20 countries. He has also served on the board of directors of several public companies. He is a distinguished fellow of the Academy of Marketing Science, fellow of the American Psychological Association, and a recipient of Distinguished Fellow Award from the International Engineering Consortium. We request Professor Jagdish Shait to kindly address the gathering. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Uh, in the back, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Can you see me also? Yes, sir. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Uh, my style is totally informal. I am 79 years old. Do I look 79? <laughs> That's because I went into marketing. <laughs> First lesson in marketing we learn, it's all about packaging, right? <laughs> so that's what you see around here. I do want to make about four or five key points which are absolutely in important, especially in the Indian context. The consumption in all emerging economies, at least 65% of products and 90% of services is all unbranded consumption. Digital technology is revolutionizing by making it more and more branded consumptions. That young woman who starts her own uh, nail polishing, etc., um, beauty thing, she will have a brand of her own. It is not as if the large corporations are the only ones who can create brands. Today, each individual is ab able to create their own brands. You can have a YouTube channel and have millions of followers from an ordinary village any place in the world. So one of the key consequences of this technology is to transform and the Hindi and the English that we mix. Very important change. How is this technology going to affect us? We also find that the trend in this country is that we are becoming more and more a nuclear family. In the old days, we all grew up in the extended family. The brothers and the sisters lived together, joint family system as we call it, which may be true still in a smaller number of communities. But today, young people meet young people on their own in colleges. They want to get married but they don't want to be with their parents. They are starting their own household. That means they are the first time buyers of everything, not just cell phones, not just television, not just appliances, automobile. This is the market that is above. We request the dignitaries to find, along with the book, a flyer pertaining to Professor Shade's Shade Leadership Academy. Due to his travelling schedule, Sir has not been good wishes to all of us. We, we thank, thank you, you, Sir. sir. <laughs> a leader takes people from where they are to where they ought to be. He takes a little more than his share of the blame and a little less than his share of the credit. Leadership is an action, not a position, a behavior, not a title. Sri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, Honorable Union Minister, is holding the portfolio of Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and Ministry of Law and Justice. He is also a member of Parliament in Rajya Sabha and represents Bihar. Besides Minister of State in the Ministry of Coal and Mines, the Ministry of Law and Justice, and Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in the earlier NDA government. Implementation of the Digital India vision of the Prime Minister of India is spearheaded by Sri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, whose efforts have led to the revival of India's once-down telecom sector. His efforts made BSNL see turnaround. Among other yeoman efforts by him are developing India into a global electronics manufacturing hub, leading India's stand in global internet governance by advocating the multi-stakeholder approach to make internet governance more democratic. To make the internet available free and open to all is his next vision. 
His efforts have ensured that 250,000 village clusters are connected with high-speed optical fiber broadband resulting in multiple growth of mobile and internet users. He is globally acknowledged for his firm stand on net neutrality. We now request our Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasadji, to come up onto the dice and grace this occasion. I am getting a little nostalgic today. Right from the time I was a student activist in the JP movement and the Vidyarthi Parishad activist, I have been visiting Delhi University also in my various capacity as a minister in the Bajpai government. Otherwise, but indeed, it is for the first time that I have come in Delhi School of Economics. Therefore, Kavita Sharma, thank you for inviting me. It is a great institution of international acclaim produced some of the finest teachers, administrators, and corporate leaders. Therefore, I am similarly honored to be here today. Vinita mentioned about her own interesting experiences this morning in quest of digital marketing. My tailor was to make a new suit for me. He was after me for the last 10 days to have a trial. And the pressing time of the minister was not giving me any time. Because I hardly need to emphasize that this is the Narendra Modi government, where every Sunday is a Monday for us. <laughs> Tomorrow I am going out again, day after I am leaving for Sri Lanka. So I gave him time this morning. He saw, took the measurement, it is okay or not. Suddenly he took out his smartphone and clicked the new suit which he has come for trial. I said, what are you doing? He said, I am going to take it for you. This is necessary. Now, no one told him that you can use digital technology to enhance your products. That is India. A second example is all the more interesting, not necessarily for marketing. In last January, I had spoken somewhere in Delhi where I showed the original copy of the Constitution, which has very interesting illustrations. The debate arose when the Founding Father came to present the copy to the people of the country and the world. And Professor Nandlal Bose was commissioned, the famous painter from Calcutta. And with the consultation of Nehruji, Sadar Patel, Dr. Ambedkar, Rajan Prasad, the Vedic view of life, Lord Ram returning from Sri Lanka with Sita and Ayodhya. Lord Krishna giving Updesh of Gita. Lord Buddha, Lord Mahavir, Nataraj, Akbar, Kabir, Mahana Pratap, Shivaji, Gandhiji, all were illustrated. I spoke in January 2017. About 20 days ago, suddenly it came on WhatsApp. I don't know who put it. I have been getting messages from Boston, from New York, from the IES community, from the teachers community, I had forgotten when he keeps on speaking. Then I saw it as per a conservative estimate, nearly 3 million people have seen it in India and globally. I don't know, some of you may have seen it here as well. This is the new manifestation of an emerging India. Obviously, it is creating market too. For market market to happen, you need you need suppliers and also you need consumers. And you need a platform which is accessible, which has application and which can be adopted. How the Digital India program is creating those opportunities? Today I will like to briefly outline before this August gathering and how it is transforming India, metamorphosing India, in a realm beyond recognition. Because give me the benefit of observing the evolution of India. As an activist of my student life, as a parliamentarian for nearly 18 years, having experience of governance in the Bajpayee government, in the Modi government, 
having worked as a representative of my party in eight states of India and campaigning in the country for the last nearly 30 years. I have seen democratic India emerge and evolve. But the sheer potential which the IT India is unleashing is unimaginable. E-commerce is rising in India. The biggest catchment area is the rural India. And when I was handling the communication department, I pushed my postman into uh, delivery of the products of e-commerce because वो बहुत परेशान थे कि आजकल मनी ऑर्डर नहीं आता है, चिट्ठी नहीं आती है, सब कुछ एसएमएस से होता है। I I I said चलो, become the agent for delivery of e-commerce and do you know? I have seen myself going to rural India. Aspiration is the same, excitement is the same, opportunity is not there of a mall of a shop, and what e-commerce does is to give them a platform to fulfil their aspiration. And the biggest catchment is from Bihar, from Northeast villages. That is the core area of e-commerce. Apart from what Professor said, a great rise during festivals like Diwali, etc. India's digital ecosystem is very, very powerful. Yes, cyber security is important. We are taking a step for that. Cyber coordination center, cyber drilling, cyber education. And Professor Tagia, I'm very happy to note that you have started or going to start a separate department of cyber security, keep it up. Whatever is required to be done, we'll do because India's, India is going to become a very powerful center of low cost cyber security products, not high end. If this is going to create opportunity, I want to administer certain cautions to you. What Vinita rightly said. Today, the consumer will become the creator of his own content. And all the traditional norms of marketing would go for a bust. What model will come, you don't know. Second, it is a virtual world, not a real world. And vice versa. And if in this virtual world, the pressure for marketing would be enormous, the challenges will also be enormous. And how does a common consumer react? Again, a very interesting illustration. Yesterday, PM directed some of five, seven senior ministers to sit and sort out a thing urgently. So, we had dinner at our place. My wife is a professor of history at Patna University. My servants are there. I said, Khana banao. So when I came back from office late, I asked Raju, Kya bana rahe ho? So, I found he was listening a Bhojpuri song from YouTube on his smartphone. So, I smiled at his innovation. Now, Bhaiya Ji, this is a lot of ads. Please close the ads. I like the song. Cannot go for independent survey. Cannot go for independent survey. Independent survey. The common man is going to be in connect with the suppliers and those who can't pay. Few words about data security and rightly, Vinita Bali mentioned about that. All these creates a lot of data. Data is the new oil, as often it is said. While we respect data privacy, it should be done. But under the garb of privacy, you cannot kill innovation. Data is important. In the view of demonetization, we struck 2,50,000 companies from record who only operated when the note bandi was announced. Many were one building 100 companies. One company had 2,000 bank accounts. One company had no bank account. It coolly deposited 2,4,000 crores and withdrew in three days 2,4,000 crores. 2,400 crores. Do you know? Out of the 14 lakh which came back, old 500 and 1,000 notes. Only 1.5 lakh people deposited 5 lakh crores. And 17,000 companies deposited 35,000 crores. How could you handle this data? Because there is data analysis by which you can take action. Therefore, I always say, we need to have a balance. And let me give you a very interesting example. Aapko Delhi se Mumbai jana hai. Jaiya, ye jana aapke nizi baat hai. It is a private affair. 
But if you are going by plane, your ticket will be digital. And when you go at the airport, there will be a scanning by the security people. Your face will be there on the CCTV. And when you reach, your arrival will be recorded. Everything is recorded. You will say, what is this, my invasion of privacy? Then you straight away drive down to Mumbai or cycle. Because even if you drive, you have to take petrol in midway. Then you have to get a receipt. Therefore, this whole idea, what you eat is your personal choice. But if you want to eat in a restaurant, you will ask a bill. He will know what you have eaten because the bill is digital. Therefore, let us not overblow this issue of privacy. Yes, what is strictly private? Your medical record, your banking record, all these things are subject of privacy. Therefore, I always say, when we talk of privacy, we need to have a balance. Data availability, data utility, data anonymity, and data privacy. You need data for innovation. India is going to become a big center of data analysis. Suppose there is a health problem in a particular area of a particular district. The government must have the data. But that data should be anonymous to frame a good policy. Therefore, I have set up a committee under retired Justice Sri Krishna Prasad Tyagi, being a man from law, you need to know, where we are working out a robust and a good data privacy law for India, which can become a beacon for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude that all this is going to create huge opportunity. I don't know how the market will evolve. I don't know what shall be the nature of competition. I also don't know what shall be the future contours of this digital marketing. But one thing I know for sure, in the center of all this would be a little man with a smartphone in his hand dictating his terms. That is how I see this market evolving. And therefore, let me conclude with another interesting example which I saw for myself how India is changing. I sit as an IT minister in the electronics location and I sit as a law minister in the Shastri Bhavan. We had just declared demotization. So there is a famous pakoda wala in front of the Shastri Bhavan. In the evening, a lot of people take tea and it was just two days when the demotization has been declared. And from my window on the fourth floor, I saw digital payment liya jata hai. No one told him, but he realized, if I have to sell my pagodas, I must have a digital payment platform available. And the second is, I was coming from yeah, my IT ministry, the scope complex, to my law ministry or parliament. There was a red light there. I had to stop. Suddenly, I saw a rickshaw khelawala handling two smartphones. He was telling his customers, Sahab, aapka maal pahuncha diya hai. And then, Sahab, aap thoda wait kariye, aadhe ghante mein pahuncha hai. My security didn't allow me to get down. I wanted to have a photograph of him. That is the new digital marketing. No one told him, but he realized, if I have to be in business, I must be connected, not with one smartphone, but two smartphones. That is the emerging contours of India, which all of you need to understand. I am very proud. Digital India is politics neutral. Digital India is only India positive. And that's how it has started giving its results. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Namaskar Jain. Thank you, sir. Academy, which contains the link to sir's audio lessons. We request our guest of honor, Professor Yogesh K. Tyagi, to kindly felicitate the Chief Guest Honorable Sri Ravi Shankar Prasadji with a memento as a token of gratitude and the embodiment of knowledge and idol of Goddess Saraswati.
Next, we request Professor Kavita Sharma to felicitate the guest of honor, Professor Yogesh K. Tyagi, with a memento. We request Professor Madan Lal to kindly felicitate our distinguished guest, Professor Pami Dua. shared his learnings with the students but has remained a source of motivation. Dr. Madan Lal is a passionate academician and scholar in international business and marketing. He handles papers in international economics, international trade, research methodology and marketing. He has taught for more than 14 years in Institute of Management Studies, Banaras in the University, before joining as a professor in the Department of Commerce, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. Dr. Lal has completed two major research papers in marketing and international trade. He has authored and edited three books and published more than two dozen research papers in national and international journals. He has coordinated about 15 FDPs, QIPs, workshops and conferences of national and international level and delivered lectures at various academic platforms. We would now like to request conference convener Professor Madan Lal to deliver the vote of thanks. Afternoon. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping the present and not giving it. Are the words of William Arthur Wood for word of thanks. Chief Guest of the Conference, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Honorable Minister of Electronics and Information Technology and Minister of Law and Justice, Government of India, Guest of Honor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Yogesh Ketyagi, University of Delhi, Respected Guest of Honor, Ms. Sumita Ambinita Bali, former CMD Britannia Industries Limited, Distinguished Guest, Professor Pami Dua, Chairperson, Research Council and Director, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi, Keynote speaker, Professor Levi Shep, Emory University, Atlanta, USA, and founder chairman, Academy of Indian Marketing, Professor Kavita Sharma, head and dean, Faculty of Commerce and Business, University of Delhi, dignitaries of the desk, university officials, principals of the colleges, guest faculty members, students, ladies, and gentlemen. It is my pleasant duty to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of Department of Commerce, Delhi School of Economics, and myself, express regard and heartfelt thanks to our Chief Guest Honorable Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Minister of Electronics and Information Technology and Minister of Law and Justice, Government of India, for sharing his precious time and thoughts with us today morning. Sir, we are greatly encouraged by your gracious presence and immensely benefited from your inspiring address. Thank you very much. I must mention our deep sense of indebtedness to our guest of honor, Honorable Professor Yogesh Ketyagi, Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi, for his benign presence and guidance. His transformational, inclusive, and intellectual leadership have provided us with academic and research freedom. Sir, we are blessed with your presence. I would like to thank guest of honor, Ms. Benita Bali, former CMD Britannia Industries Limited for sparing her valuable time 
and sharing her thoughts with us. Thank you, Madam. I would like to thank our distinguished guest, Professor Pami Dua, Chairperson of Research Council and Director, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi, for being with us and sharing her thoughts and also for providing us the facility to organize this conference in Vivekananda Hall. Thank you, Madam. I cannot forget to thank the keynote speaker and program co-chair Professor Jagri Seth, Emory University, Atlanta, USA and founder chairman, Academy of Indian Marketing for partnering with us for this conference and sharing intellectual inputs. He is an academic stalwart and institution in himself. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Expressing gratitude is not enough for Professor Kavita Sharma, uh, head and dean, faculty of commerce and business, University of Delhi, and program chair, who is brain behind conceptualization and carrying out forward this idea to this level. She is worthy of full credit for her wholehearted involvement in the event. Thank you, Madam. I should not forget to thank our plenary and special session speakers, breakout session speakers, chairs, co-chairs, reviewers of the papers for agreeing to offer their support and time. We are equally thankful to the delegates for their search papers, contributions and institutions for sparing them for the conference. Our thanks are due to invited guests, principals of the colleges, university officials, administration, faculty members, non-teaching staff, staff of DSC, for their support and help. We have been fortunate enough to have vibrant academic associate team of Academy of Indian Marketing, whose academic contribution have been of immense importance to us. We thank AIM. My gratitude to the energetic organizing team of young faculty members and students who have worked extremely hard and without whom this conference would not have been possible. We thank them. Our thanks to transport, logistics, food and accommodation providers also. We also would like to put on records our thanks to sponsors, Council Branch University of Delhi, ICSSR, SBI, X-Men, SAIS Publications, ICICI, and supporters, Sudha Printing Press, Easy Chair, Conference Alerts, Deco, and Publishing Partner, Amrel Publishing. Lastly, I thank, on behalf of the Department of Commerce, Delhi School of Economics, each and everyone who have directly or indirectly contributed to this conference. Thank you very much. Faculty member, please join us for photograph.
and Sony's are now competing with Canon. Or who says that Canon has only these three, four, five comparators? Com competition is where your opportunity is slipping out of your hand. I mean, we created a store, a retail store, fantastic customer experience. Customers come in, a couple came. Wife wanted to give to the husband a gift of a digital SLR. And husband said, I'm going to see there, I have to buy Canon because I've got my lenses there saw the digital SLR, saw the camera, there was a conversation happening between the two. And then after some time, he said, thank you, and he left without buying. And outside, the wife asked him, why are you not buying? I have to gift you this. He said, no, I'm just thinking, this camera is 1,200 US dollars. I'm just thinking, maybe I can continue with my old model for a while. <laughs> iPhone has launched an iPhone X. I would rather buy iPhone X. Can you gift me that? <laughs> Simple conversation, but it is a serious issue. Who is Canon's competitor? Can competitors are those where your opportunity slips out. And therefore, we are now a part of a bigger ecosystem. Industry boundaries are collapsing. You think of a future of marketing, begin to <laughs> redefine the way you define your competition. And also, you redefine the way you define your opportunities. And this is becoming as an, another shift that is happening. The other thing that I want to quickly talk about uh, as, a, as, an, as a thought is about how do you, really speaking, define your value and how do you continue to enhance your value. If you want to be a good marketeer, my thumb rule. If every year, every year, huh, in developing countries, develop maybe faster, developing years, if every year, you have not redefined the value that you're giving to the customer, you are going to slip out. Redefine anything, whether your packaging changed, 
whether your services changed, your warranty period changed, or in the worst situation, if none of that is happening, simplest thing that you have done is to at least provide a customer a better customer experience. Some value has to change. This is a very, very important part of marketing. We used to say, what is a good value? Simple rule. First, we look at better, faster, cheaper. Are you offering to customer cheaper thing than what you were doing it earlier? Better or faster? These are the simple ways of doing value comparisons. And of course, when the new values are being created by companies like Airbnb or Uber, and you have heard of all of those, or when iPhone came into being, those were new values. Those are game-changing values. But I'm talking about a normal uh, improvement. Uh, but now, the value really speaking means, are you personalized? So if we have 100,000 customers in Asia, all 100,000 customers we must know. And thanks to you that, I mean, we must thank the technology that actually it enables personalization easily. All digital SLRs, imagine for a minute, are all internet enabled, they're all Wi-Fi enabled. You are pushing pictures out and pulling pictures in everything, your behavior is all known to us, your, uh, because you are connected. Therefore, if the camera fails, company should know camera failed. And that company service center should know that maybe today or tomorrow you are going to be coming anyway. And where are you located? The industrial age, which is what we study. Total cost is equal to variable cost plus fixed cost. The largest fixed cost is about 40% in the aerospace industry. I'm talking about industrial, mechanical, electromechanical, not the digital products. And now we learned that theory of marginal costing is very important because marginal cost is what you should price marginally, right? I can maximize profits. So here I can maximize my profit primarily through what is called the scale advantage. Economies of scale is the phrase that we use. What matters is size, not speed. Now comes the digital age, which is very different. Traditional economic theory breaks down now because the total cost is fixed cost. This technology has only two components, a semiconductor, or a wafer as they call it, and a software. Today to have a new semiconductor factory, I work for Motorola, Texas Instrument, National Semiconductor, all the semiconductor companies. Minimum cost today is $2.6 billion to start a new semiconductor factory. It is bigger than a paper mill, bigger than a steel mill, for example, which are the industrial examples. It's absolutely incredible. And today, a new operating industrial companies cannot understand how do you give away the product free. So Facebook gives up the product free. Instagram gives up the product free. And they get the scale in the process. Industrial age breaks down because we believe in vertical integration. The more you have vertical integration in digital age, the more you are at a disadvantage. Because vertical integration slows you down internally through the processors, so speed is not there. Transfer pricing issues, subsidiary issues, etc. It's very complicated. So we actually encourage companies to break it up. In many ways, we create a virtual organization or a contractual relationship. Apple does not manufacture. Apple gets it done through a third-party manufacturer. It could be owned by you, but it's a contractual relationship rather than a subsidiary. So around here, I can only maximize cash flow. So I do stock market analysis just for fun, and the price-earning ratio is obsolete. That was designed for the industrial age. If you look at the S&P 500 companies or Dow Jones as an index, there are now fewer and fewer industrial companies and more and more technology or Silicon Valley companies rising into the thing. So all the price earnings ratio is very different. I can only maximize cash flow. This alone has led to a change in the way we think in the cable industry, because that's the advising you go, because you think differently than the traditional one, which is fascinating. So around here, what matters is scale and speed. So vertical integration is a disadvantage. The best model here is to actually create a technology and license as fast as possible to everybody. So Android is a great example on the Google side, for example, and Apple is not a good example. Apple is losing. GSM was created as a common standard by Europeans. I was working in cellular quite a lot. We American invented, but we had the AMPS trial, TDMA, CDMA. We fooled around with trials, let the market decide. It never could create the scale. And GSM came out of Europe as a standard, 
rolled over completely the worldwide. Today, GSM is a de facto standard. You need the scale in this business to get economies of scale in your software and in your chip making business by and large, which is interesting to watch. So what you need around here is no vertical integration. I mean, then a simple idea like that, the whole Texas Instrument Corporation was reformulated. We are divested all the manufacturing because if you look at the balance sheet, $600 million R&D budget was generating $1.4 in royalty money. No manufacturing can ever de deliver return on that capital. And manufacturing has all the labor issues, environmental issues worldwide, so we divested all manufacturing except DSP chips. And the reason is that there will be more chips sold on a cellular telephone than on microprocessor. Intel is a microprocessor. We leapfrog completely. Nokia was the key account. The whole company is transforming in the process, which is the power of what we academics do in terms of thinking, impacting the public policy or the corporations, you know, pretty much. So that's what key area. This says that marketing will change differently. In general, there are three barriers to market access. There's a location barrier. All of our thinking was around location-centric ideas, retailing, for example. Even advertising is location-bound. Then another one, of course, is time-bound. Product life cycle is a time-bound concept. Customer loyalty is a time-bound concept, for example. And the third one is the theory of the middleman. Middleman comes in the way that creates huge friction. They store it, they hold it, they speculate, etc. So how do you remove those with digital technology it transforms the whole field of marketing? So digital marketing means anytime, anywhere, anyhow, whether through distribution or directly, however you reach the customer, is a new model. So we become location agnostic and time agnostic primarily. That's a framework. So here is the impact on product. And I'll run through quickly because of the time. I want to give time to my colleague. Digitized products such as publishing, are going to be more impacted than physical product. Publishing is on a total change right now. In the US, printing material or newspapers are declining enormously in revenues, both subscription revenues as well as advertising revenues. So companies like New York Times or Los Angeles Times, Times Mirror is the company, are struggling about how to go from the print media to the digital media. Surprisingly, in India, we still have a much bigger print market. I met the publisher of uh, Hindi newspapers. He told me just now, in Atlanta, he came to meet me. They produce print 6 million copies every day in this country. But he says, my days are getting over now. They are printing presses every place locally. They digitize the content. Locally, the print is very fascinating. So publishing is getting impacted first. All the content is getting digitized. So now I don't have to go to the library. Library comes to me. Probably opposite. I can do library on my laptop or wherever I am. Very interesting. Time, location, all gone, right? We'll have the highest impact and the most immediate impact. Products will become very smart. This technology can be embedded into electromechanical technologies, mechanical technologies. I can embed it, which is the the Internet of Things, as we call it now, IoT, everything becomes smart now. I worked on the automobile, what we call autonomous cars, way back at GM uh, Tech Center. We used to call dual mode car control. And I can automate the car and make it smarter than ever before. Now it's very smart, mostly through software. Tesla will be primarily a software company, not a car company or a forecast, primarily providing battery as, as a supplier in the industry. Because Tesla car can change your car by strictly software iterations. You have to remove the distribution system, very fascinating. So everything is smart. Smart toilet, which is a major project in Japan, almost 30 years old now. Very, very fascinating. Because aging is, the population is aging, and therefore they don't have people to come and serve the people who are aging at home. Chronic diseases, so the government has a policy actually to say how can we make the toilet smart. So while you are sitting down, it will not only flush us the toilet out of sheer lack of manpower. So we are watching Japan as a trendsetter, not America. America still is quite behind in the process pretty much. So that's really what we are watching. Our fusion of the old and the new. So Amazon is an online, will become brick and mortar. In fact, uh, I can't share certain things, but right now Amazon is negotiating with a very large brick and mortar retailer. Amazon is dead set about coming to India 
They have made this as a strategic investment, $6 billion they will invest, so they're going to combine the two. So Amazon is a retailer, driverless cars, we have talked about that one, Uber taxi service, etc. This is the future of the old and the new, essentially. Branding will become more imaginative. Brandings are just not imaginative. Our branding came from FMCG, we call it in India, right? Consumer packaged food, as we call it. That is very stale. World-class brands are no longer Coca-Cola or General Electric, for that matter. Today, the brands are created by names like Apple. No ad agency or a brand manager would have ever thought about calling a product Apple or Google. Are you with me? The imaginative brand quality industry, leave a voicemail about your pleasure or displeasure or dissatisfaction. Immediately, it is transcribed by somebody in Hungary or wherever it is, worldwide, it sends out. It gets transcribed. People are just hungry, waiting on their PC or on a laptop freelance workers. You talk about minimum wage, there is no minimum wage. And then it comes out with a transcription. It goes on to the, uh, I think, the one of the platforms uh, which was a part of the older technology. And every manager, whether it's a uh, laundry guy or the room service person or the restaurant or the lobby people, all get an alert to say, here is a problem with this customer. Who wants to own it? Very different approach to doing things from market research viewpoint. That's what's happening. And social media will take over. In fact, the largest market, largest nation is no longer China or India, it is Facebook nation. Facebook nation is fantastic. Two billion or more than two billion now. It's such a dynamic thing. It has no governance by any jurisdiction. And it's a market by itself. It is becoming a marketplace. It will probably take over more and more share of the ad revenues from Google too. In fact, I'm using it right now. I'm fast fascinating the way they guide me book that you've got genes, climate and culture. I want because publishers don't do anything for you anymore. So I'm doing it myself to see how it works, which is fascinating. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. This is the one that I've been working. We have a couple of papers. We are now extending ourselves into the virtual world. Just to be in time to milk the cow which is in farm season. It's just like I have a dress. I can dress avatar differently, I can make the changes. People are into that virtual world to a level that we have never imagined. Now think about the artificial intelligence and think about the other things which is going to impact your communication. Blurring of advertising, promotion and word of mouth influence, which used to be compartmentalized, no longer. And the last part is much, very interestingly, medium. I can have a YouTube channel in finite numbers. Remember, broadcast has a limited channel, cable expands the number of channels, in the case of YouTube, I can have a channel of thousands I want. So we are advocating, uh, telling corporations, why not have a bucks to the ad agencies or mega bucks to the media, etc. So this is fascinating. By the way, some of the largest web uh, followers things are basically personalities, right? So I can create channel by each product if I wanted to. The capacity limit, either by regulation or by technology, is just out. So I can blur the boundaries enormously. YouTube is. Watch YouTube, in a small part of the world can access me and I can access them. That was virtually impossible, which is a big change. So eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, and more telemedicine. So that's clearly the one area. So I'm talking about price. Price is very interesting. Price arbitrage is not sustainable, which is what people did. Middlemen did that price arbitrage, etc. It's just not sustainable. In this technology, price becomes much more transparent and equal across different areas, unless there are uh, jurisdictional issues or, for example, government regulations, etc. So real-time and dynamic pricing. <coughs> Who said I have to price change every day? Stock market does it real-time. All products will go. Public parking in Singapore is dynamic pricing. All over the city you will see signs that say so many slots are available where and the pricing is now not same but different depending upon demand supply. I can do quite a lot. Subscription-based pricing, which we had a transactional-based pricing, but now it's become a subscription-based pricing more and more as we have seen in the IT world. I think it will become more a norm. Bundling is very common, but unbundling also becomes very common and pricing goes global. I can price it something here, which is the Uber does that, for example. Amazon can do it, etc. So pricing now becomes a global event, not just a local event as it used to be, right? Uh, now I'll take the last area, 
and that is the, uh, in addition to four P's of marketing, uh, digital marketing will also impact on market research. You have seen this clearly. And we have people around here who do dabble into that one. I advise some companies uh, mentoring, etc. Customer support also will become impacted by this one, the way we do customer support. And the last one is customer feedback. Customer feedback is becoming very fascinating change by this technology. Uh, traditional marketing as we know it, but I wanted to summarize quickly to show you that we need to question our traditional laws if we believe our marketing principles or the laws, they are now turned around enormously by this technology. Thank you very much. I'm going to let it download. Convergent, divergent validity, and so on and so forth. So, the second part talked about the protein belong to an age group of 18 years and above. The type of sampling that we use so far we have made during the period of our study. The time period that I took for the period of my study was from January, uh, January 2017 to October 2017. So, what our study revealed was that the majority of the respondents had spent less than 5,000 during that tenure, and the frequency of their purchases lied between two to five times. Coming to this part of our questionnaire, this is a this relates to the second part of our questionnaire. The second part of the questionnaire talked about the various statements which was captured on the five-point Likert scale. So, in this particular slide, uh, it talks about when the respondents were asked whether they prefer buying from the site uh, from the website which is aesthetically appealing, to which. Uh, majority of the respondents stayed neutral, but yet 30.70% of the respondents agreed to the said statement. Similarly, uh, majority of the respondents strongly agree, agree to this given statement that they prefer buying from the website whose user interface has a well-organized experience. Coming to this particular website, uh, here again the majority of our respondents strongly agreed to the, both the statement of the day. This particular slide talks about the risk and the security factor that comes across when we are shopping online. So the majority of the respondents stayed neutral, but yes, uh, majority also agreed on the sta uh, statement saying that while shopping online, they hesitate by giving their credit card details. And also, uh, majority, uh, majority also agreed on this that online shopping is as secure as traditional shopping. Coming to this particular slide, this slide poses the question that whether they prefer to buy if cash on delivery option is available, to which it was strongly agreed by the majority of the respondents again. In this particular statement, they were asked if they prefer buying from a website which is organized in such a way that it directly takes them to a discount section and minimizes their shopping time, which was again strongly agreed by the respondents. Talking about the discount factor and whether they would like to return to a website if they are dissatisfied or not happy for the first time, to which we got a strongly agreed response from the majority of the respondents. <coughs> 
talking about this particular web, uh, this particular slide, uh, in this statement they were asked if they prefer buying from a website which contributes a clear exchange and return policy. So nowadays consumer really uh, really wants a hassle-free return policy. So the majority of the respondent, that is 56.90%, strongly agree to the given statement. In this part of the questionnaire, uh, we asked the respondents five basic parameters.